Hey folks, welcome back to Explominate. This is Battle Mode, and with me I've got Sean. Hey man, how's it going? I'm alright mate, how are you? I'm good, yeah, it's doing well. So uh, Sean and I are reaching out across the pond to get a multiplayer game on the go. Like I've been wanting to play Gladius on the channel for ages, and I've not played it in a while. I don't think I've ever actually done a series here. I think I might have played it in... I think I might have done a Twitch stream, but that's, that's basically it. And this is like one of my favourite 4X games. You know, it's 4X-like game. Um, it's just so well done, and it's had loads of new DLC since I've last looked at it that I just kind of wanted to have a look and kind of get back into the game. And Sean's also been playing, so what do you think about Gladius, Sean? I think it's awesome, man. Like, um, as I think a lot of us know, like, I'm not as much of a 4X guy as you guys, but, like, of, of any of the ones that I've played, this is one of my favourites, if not the fa my favourite altogether. So, yeah, no, I'm definitely keen to to get into it and show it off. I think this game really bridges the, the divide between 4X games and tactics games because it's a very mil military focused game. Um, so anybody who's watching who's wondering what it's about, if, they, if you haven't actually seen it by now, it's this game's a few years old now. I think it's like three years old, I'd say. I think I'm getting, yeah, I think it came out in 2018, I'm gonna say. So yeah, nearly four years. But it's very war focused. It's, it plays very much like Okay, we get we get stick for this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna explain it anyway. It kind of plays like a turn-based version of an RTS game. Now, if that sounds like an oxymoron, it's not really. Um, it's this, you know, don't, without getting hung up on the you know the the paradox between it being turn-based and real time. It's not a real-time game. It's a turn-based game. However, it has the same format as something like StarCraft. You have a base, you you collect resources, you pump out units, and you 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 might make another base or two, maybe two or three max and then you defeat your enemies and it's really it's a, basically a game about pumping out in just you know having an industry to pump out units so it's quite i mean mechanically for a 4x some people would kind of argue that it's not really a 4x game because it you know it doesn't have the multiple victory conditions i don't like that i think that's a dumb thing because that that basically invad invalidates master of orion because that's only got one victory condition as well so i don't i don't like that but it, it it's a fair comment it's a very it's a very war focused game and whether it's a 4x or a tactics game i'll let you decide we don't really care okay so who are you playing this time sean i'm playing the adeptus mechanicus so that's the brand new dlc that just came out like what um uh, not even a month ago so it's really new I, i've had a bit of a poke around with it did a, did a quick write-up um so I've, I've spent enough time with it to have a fair idea of how to play them and yeah no i'm pretty keen to show them off they're a lot of fun to play and they're like all the other factions they're very unique in their own right I've not actually tried this DLC yet at all. I've um, I've got all of them, but I haven't played that one yet. I've also barely played the uh, Craftworld Eldari one, the Eldar. Um, and this is again, this is a DLC that came out months ago now. I think this is like six months ago maybe. And I just didn't really get a chance to play it because I was just too busy. And just before we started this series, Sean and I had a we we played a quick game through. Um, we had basically the same settings, uh, except Sean was playing Space Marines, but. We were playing against a combined team of Chaos Space Marines and Necrons, and you know, so we were basically we've got two teams of two uh, two factions, and we were playing on normal, and it was just really easy. We just absolutely ruffle stomp the uh, the the AI. Uh, the AI on this game is really really good. It's you know for a four X game, it's it's pretty good. The game knows how to play it. It will it will retreat when it it will attack in force. It attacks where you're weak, and it will it will retreat. Um, it, you know, it's uh, it's a pretty solid AI. I'd say. Um, if I'm playing this game on my own, if I'm playing like, let's say I'm playing one player and I've got like four opponents and they're all, you know, there's no teams. If I put it on very hard, I will win about 75% of the time, I'd say. But I will, I can occasionally lose if I'm not playing well. Um, with a faction that I've not really played before like this, I'm, you know, very hard is going to be pretty, I don't know, I'm hoping it's going to be quite challenging. But I think two AI, uh, two human players versus two very hard AI, I think this should show off, you know, some... You know some excitement in the game without it you know without me and sean losing <laughs> but we might lose and honestly if we do lose we'll just start again so how are you feeling about that yeah man i'm keen i think the hardest part of last time was the neutral so if we can get past that we'll be set but yeah, yeah. No, i think um it's it's good it shows off like the team dynamics and how we can try to sort of synchronize up our units show what they can do when they're when they're paired up 
Okay, I'm just going to show you the settings that we've got. We've basically got everything turned on, all the DLC. The only thing I've turned off is the Lord of Skulls. And the reason being is we're both playing factions that we're not that familiar with. And the Lord of Skulls is actually quite hard to defeat, especially on the high difficulty settings. And sometimes it can kind of just crop up right next to your, bit, like your cities and just do a lot of damage. And potentially end the game. And I just can't be bothered with that. I've also turned off the quests. Um... The quests are great when you're learning a faction, and they, they it adds some much needed fluff to uh, to War, uh, to Gladius. But I don't play with them on when I'm just playing it as a straight kind of like you know skirmish 4x game. So so we turn those off. Uh, everything else is on. We've basically set the game so that it's it's pretty much on medium. Uh, you can have a lot of fun with Gladius by playing with all these settings. Uh, just be warned that if you do the game is I think the game is balanced so that it's set you know so everything is set on medium. If you start increasing this stuff, or you know, like dropping stuff down, particularly the region densities, right? You might find that your faction might struggle because certain factions favour certain resources over others. Um, so you can you can really get deep into the into the gears of this game if you want to make things hard for yourself. Uh, I, lo I love it. It's it's one of the most customizable of these kind of games that I know. It's really really solid in that respect. Okay, let's. Uh, let, without further ado, let's get on. So. Uh, here we go. So I think the best way of doing this is because Sean and I are both playing through my screen. As well, he's playing on his screen and I'm recording mine. So um, I'm going to do my best to try to show off both of what we're doing. But it's going to be a long, long game if, I, if we kind of play turn by turn. So I'll just kind of give an overview of what's going on. So what have you got here, Sean? I'm just looking at your area now. All right, so at the moment I've got a Shard of Vol and a Fermentation Pool. So I've got the, in terms of units, so the mechanic is spawned in with two Skatari Vanguards, like the basic ranged infantry unit. And then I've also got the Cybernetica Data Smith. So these guys, uh, they can found units. Uh, sorry, they can found cities. But they also, they're a kind of a hero unit. Like They're not classed as a hero unit. They can't get items, but they have unique abilities of their own like they these guys can actually when you run into neutral camps of with castellan robots they can actually hack the robots and turn them to your side so they're a pretty useful unit that's so pretty cool. right now i'm just gonna find something that i can spawn a city on that's not a bad tile <laughs> there's a lot of like negative modifiers around here is this basically a little bit like the space marine apothecary would you say it, you know it's kind of like a hero but but not yeah I, kind I forget, of, yeah, I forget how the apothecary works now. Okay, so I've actually got a city. I don't think Sean starts with a city. No, he's not. And uh, so Sean gets. He starts off with the option to put his city where he wants. I've actually got one already on this webway gateway. So the Craftworld Eldari basically they have this this webway gateway thing, um, webway gate. And basically, what happens is you can you can reactivate them, and it allows you to instantly instantaneously travel between the two locations. At the start of the game, it does actually cost you influence points um, to actually travel between the two. So uh, the enemies will attack them as well once they've been reactivated. In fact, they'll attack them before they're reactivated. So you kind of, if you, if we just go across the map, you'll see that I've actually got eyes on all of these hexes that have got a webway gate. So I can tell where the gates are, um, but I can't actually, I can't actually see anything around them until I activate them. So that's kind of an interesting thing that the Eldar have got. I'm starting with Guardians as well. Uh, these Guardians are just kind of a, a basic... They're the basic infantry unit you get. They're actually quite strong, I'd say. They've um, Their Shuriken Catapult does a lot of damage. The problem is they really don't have much in the way of armor or hit points. They're really, really squishy. So you ha they die really, really easily. Okay, so... Um, what have I got here, B? Not a lot. I think I'm going to just move forward really, really carefully. One thing I've learned about playing Gladius is if you move forward too quick, you can get yourself in a world of hurt very fast. Um, so you want to explore kind of slowly and give yourself plenty of time to see what's around. Okay. All right, so yeah, I've laid down my city just on my first tier of research. I think I might go straight for the Manufactorum Cybernetica. So that's the building that makes ground vehicles and generates food and everything. Now, interesting quirk about the Admec faction, you get a loyalty bonus for building the same type of building on the same tile. So if I have one tile and I only build, say, energy buildings on that tile, I get a loyalty bonus. But if you build different buildings on that tile, you take a hit to your loyalty, like a negative modifier. So it's just something to be aware of when building as Admec. Like, they're pretty picky about how you build. 
Yeah, I kind of like the tower in that respect, except the tower, if I remember right, that you can't have more than one of the same building in the same city. It was something like that. Uh, if you start building, like, two of the same building in the same area, then you start getting big, big loyalty penalties. Okay, um, I'm just going to acquire a tile, so... Where, where are we? I think I want to get... What are you thinking first, Sean? Are you going to go for infantry? Uh, yeah, I think I'll put out some more vanguards, and I want to put out this Guitari Marshal early as well, because I know from the playthroughs that I've tried, they are ridiculously powerful for an early game unit. Yeah. Like, as, as a unit individually, they're not very powerful, but they provide some really useful buffs. I think once you get them upgraded, they can give you something like like 170% damage bonus or something. Like right. oh, if, if I get one of those out and get it like a level up, it can give enough of a boost to a Skitari Vanguard squad that it can basically one hit a bunch of slavers. Those are oh, slavers. Okay. Yeah, like they get really, really strong. So very handy. Yeah, so I'm going to go for the Assyrians Crucible first, um, which is production, research and loyalty, I think. Um, yeah, that's going to be my first bet. So I, I, I've, got, I'm, I've started in an area with really bad food production, unfortunately. Okay, next is going to be research. Um, I think I'm going to go straight for the rangers this time. Because rain I found rangers really, really useful in the last game. Okay, going to end the turn. Looks like we've got some neophyte hybrids just north of Sean's compound. Yep, just hovering around. Okay, I've got some Ves Vespid Stingwings um, to my east on a Jocuero trader cat encampment, so that'd be a good thing to go and try and take. If I can get in there and do enough damage, I forget if these guys have got Overwatch or not. I don't remember how you can tell. Yeah, they they will have. Pretty much everything's got Overwatch, hasn't it? Yeah, they're gonna get take damage doing that. I think Eldar play nicely if they're in def they're playing defensively actually. Yeah, I've just got my Vanguard just playing a little bit defensively at the moment because I didn't have both of them within range of those hybrids. Sure. Um, with the Vanguards, they're sort of like glass cannons. Like they take a lot of damage, but they also dish out a lot. So if these guys try to rush me, they're going to get they're going to be in a world of hurt. Yep. So I'll just stay here for the time being, and then when I'm ready, I'll push out. How do the uh, Skitario Vanguards hold up in combat? What would you? How well do they? Would you say they work compared to something like I don't know? Like my units, for example, my um, guardians. Yeah, they're pretty solid. Like I was saying, they are glass cannons. You can get a research in tier one that upgrades their morale, so they don't take so much of a hit. Yeah. But I find that they do well in numbers, and particularly when supported by something like a marshal that can buff the damage. Sure. I think that's like the whole admech philosophy. Like, there's a lot of buffs involved in combat with them. What it might be wise for us to do, Sean, is, is kind of link up our um, our territory, with, um, and then so we've got we explore between the area. We do need to kind of push out towards the centre of the map as well, if we can, and try to get eyes on where our opponents are. Um, but the first part of the game in, in Gladius is always shoot, uh, fighting against the against the natives. As I was Sean, just taking some taking some attacks from these uh, neophyte hydrids here. Yep, so much for defensively. There we go. <laughs> yeah. That's alright, as you'll see, they hit like trucks. So. I think uh, I'm going to activate this web gate. Here we go. Let's get that one going. As we can see, too, um, the. I don't know if all of them, some of the Admech units, they have a passive ability called Rad Saturation. If they're within melee range of an enemy, it deals damage to them each turn as well. Yeah. So it's pretty handy to have because like it can be like that last little little tick of damage that kills the unit before it can hit you back. Okay, so we've got oh, what's going on up there? Oh you're just killing you're killing off these neophytes, are you? Yep, they're being purged. Okay. Uh usually I go for the research building first, but I think I'm going to go for the um, the, pr the infantry production first this time. Um, like having early research is decent. Okay. I'm trying to keep up with the action on what's going on with Sean's thing. So, Sean, if you're going to attack stuff, let me know, and then I can I can move my screen over to kind of check stuff out. Um, Oh, 
Oh, you're right on a Necron tomb as well. That's kind of interesting. There's loads of Necron tombs. I think that's one thing that sometimes players will do. They'll, uh, if, when they're playing Necrons, they'll kind of reduce the, the reduce the number of Necron tomb locations to make it a little bit more difficult because they're pretty liberally scattered across the map. I think I've done pretty much everything I can for this turn. Okay. Ah. Uh, some Chaos Cultists just wandered right next to my Guardians and got really hurt. <laughs> yeah, they didn't do so much damage in return either, which is pretty helpful. So you're fighting Gene Stealers and I've got I've got Chaos Cultists. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of variety, eh? Yeah, there's definitely variety. I'm going to get these guys into this forest. Alright, so I'm just going to move my vanguards up and deal with these hybrids. Yep. I'm going to move these guys back. Okay. Yeah, so Sean's advancing north to the northwest. Yep, should be able to finish these guys off in one hit in a sec. Yep, there we go. I tell you, this game does very much remind me of... Um, Okay, so the, the proxy also made Pandora, and Pandora also has a, a very kind of, if I remember right, has quite a strong focus on the you know native wildlife. And also, um, I know you've played Beyond Earth as well, haven't you, Sean? And that kind of reminded me of this a little bit, in a sense that you're, you know, there's quite a lot of like hostile wildlife wandering around, and you can kind of choose to take it on or sort of try and befriend it in that one. You can't befriend anything in this game. <laughs> this is like completely, completely a war-focused game. Yeah, everything wants to kill you. <laughs> yeah. And you want to kill everything else, I think. Pretty much. All right, I think I'm pretty right here. I'm still claiming a tile, and then I'm going to put down my uh, vehicle-producing building. So you're going to go with vehicles first. Yeah, I don't think I have. I don't think I have the building that makes infantry yet, or do I? Oh wait, no, sorry, I do. Uh, you that's do, what yeah. I'm building. Yeah, the Genitor Cara. I can't even pronounce that. Cara Pradium. Cara Pradium. Yeah, know. that's it. Yeah. The infantry building, let's go with that. Oh, they actually produce food as well, that's kind of cool. You're going to need it too, because you've also started in a volcanic area like mine. It's just really bad for growing stuff. I've, I found that loyalty becomes one of the issues in this game really, really quickly. You really have to build and kind of take that into account. Okay. So I've just taken a Grox pasture at the top here. It seems to be right up in the top corner, so hopefully there's nothing else that's going to jump out and try and kill me. No worries. So I'm going to start moving back down towards you. Yeah, I'm going to get. Uh, I'm going to spend a couple of turns healing these guardians. I'm just going to inch forwards. Ah, I found some vested, vested stingwings. Uh, that could have been worse. Yeah, as you see, these guardians. They, um, I'm playing it a bit more smart than I normally do. Generally speaking, if you just blunder into stuff with guardians, you're gonna you're gonna die really really fast. They're really not strong. Uh, well, they, they don't have much defense, but yeah, I nearly killed those vespids in just one go. Um, yeah. These same early sort turns. Of deal go... there. Sorry, Sean, go ahead. Oh, you're. I was gonna say same sort of deal. They're like glass cannons kind of thing. Yep. That's the Eldar play style all around, as far as I can remember. I actually used to play Eldar in tabletop, but this was when I was a teenager, so early 90s. In fact, I probably stopped playing Warhammer games in about 95 or 94. So um, I, it was really early, early 90s that I was playing, and stuff's changed quite a lot, I'd say. <laughs> Especially Warhammer Fantasy. It seems really different to how, how it was when I played it. I'm going to gradually make my way up towards you anyway, Sean, and see if we can link up these link up our areas. That looks like one of my webway gateways under attack. Ah, looks like we found yellow, which is Necrons. That's right in the um, in the bottom right corner. Okay, so I got my re uh, my rangers researched. Good news. I'm going to go and take this um, a skull altar. Interesting. I think these guys should be able to defend themselves fairly well. Uh, they've got more hybrids sitting on the uh, out on the outpost in here. Um, 
remove the cost of activating webway gates. I want that eventually. I think I'm going to go for Ashurian Summons first, though, to increase my production. Um, production is going to be a bit slow at the start of the game. Yeah, I've got another couple of turns for that. I'm just going to end my turn. One of the nice things about this game is when you're playing co-op, it's kind of like Wego. So, in fact, it might even be Wego when you're playing against one another. I think you kind of the, the person who makes the move first goes first. I might be wrong there, but I'm, I think that's how it works. Uh, okay, so we've got the chaos at the north east of the map, and uh, the the necrons are at the southeast, as far as I can tell. Got a Katakachan devil layer. All right, well these hybrids just moved, so now I can just nick that ruin of all. Sweet. I wonder if I want to be able to take this out yet. I don't know, kind of hard. Um. Yeah, I think I do. I'm going to try and take this out. I'm going to take that slowly, though. I'm going to see if I can leave one guy on Overwatch. Um, because yep. those k killing the Catastrophe Devil there is pretty important. How are you getting on up there? All right, I'm just about to wreck these hybrids. Oh yeah. Yeah, just expanding out nicely. That's good. I did 11.2 damage, man. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I say, kind of glass cannonish fan fa uh, faction. Again, yeah, definitely. I, I, I imagine they've got DC. I, I don't know anything about Admech, by the way. I don't know anything about them in tabletop, really, or, or in this game. So, have they got? I imagine they've got some good vehicles. Yeah, yeah, they've got really cool stuff. They've got the uh, it's like the Cataphron destroyer tanks, which are pretty badass. They've got the they're like anti armor tanks. Oh, now, um, with the rad saturation, you're gonna see it kill these hybrids on their turn because they've only got one health left, and oh, rad right. saturation does, I think, one damage with three armor penetration, so they're going to die before they can hit me. Oh, interesting. All right. I think we're good to go. I might just end turn. I don't really have much else to do here. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Oh, oh, he shrouded and legged it. I didn't know they could do that. All right. He survived somehow. Okay, I'm getting attacked by Katastrophe Javels. I need to retreat because that's <laughs> that thing's going to kill me. I really wanted to kill the layer if I could, but I don't think I'm going to manage it. Um... Yeah, I don't want to lose my troops. Losing troops in this is really bad news. Oh, I should have fired before. One thing I, um, I forgot to mention is that the Eldar, can, they can shoot and then run, um, which is really a really, really interesting thing because in most of the time, if you shoot, you can't move afterwards, right? Um, with most factions, but Eldar can kind of like do this kind of fighting retreat te uh, technique. So it's really cool, man. You can like set up ambushes, then you can, you can do a load of damage and then run away in the same turn. All right, okay. so I'm now researching the Skitari Marshal. I finished the Manufactorum Cybernetica, the vehicle building. Um, now, I've just come down. I'm going to wreck these hybrids that are here, but there's more below me as well, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, I've got my first uh, infantry production building up, which is really... Uh, increased my production, I think. Yes, increased production to seven. Um, I want another one of those, but I think I do actually want to get... I think I'm going to go... I'm going to acquire another tile. Um, I'm going to need food pretty soon. Like, pretty quick. Yeah. Now, I'm what I'm going to do also here. is Admech have a... What do you call a mobility? Called Power Surge. That yeah. costs a bit of influence, but you can drop it on a tile and it'll increase the production of everything by 10% at the first level. So I'm just going to drop that as well, try and pump out some units relatively quickly and finish off this building a bit quicker. Sure. Yeah, on very hard, it's, it's good to try and get your... Uh, to get stuff up as quickly as possible, really. Like, you want to explore, but you also want to... You need to be getting some of your better units up, I'd say. Because when we do meet the AI, it's going to be... It's going to be coming at us with quite a, a large resource bonus. Oh, there you go. That was the... Uh, Clearing a tile there. Oh no, this catch on devil chased my units. No. I think Ouch. I might just I might just survive that. Yeah, it's, I don't think it's very happy that I uh well, let's I'm gonna shoot that thing. And then I'm gonna gonna retreat back into I might go into the webway gateway actually. I don't think I can do that. Let's just run him back. 
Yeah, I might back up a bit too. I don't want to push down too far. We're just two Vanguard units out. They're going to get melted if they yeah. push too far. Okay. Fear. Oh, okay, yeah, we've got morale redu reduction. I think that must be because of the Catachon Devil. Monstrous creature. There are so many little rules in this that I, I've, I've just completely forgotten about. <laughs> it's really complicated. Okay, with MR2. Right, I've got, yep, I've got one turn left on the infantry building, so as soon as that's done, I'll start cranking out units, but yeah, for now, I'll have to end turn two. Oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah, I managed to uh, rescue one of my units from from being completely annihilated by the Catastrophe Devils. Okay. The thing is, they're going to have a nest somewhere too. <laughs> it's going to be a pain. I think the AI's got another city up as well already. Okay, there we go. So we're trying to shoot this Catastrophe Devil, and I'm going to retreat back here. Let's get these guys back to my home base. Get them healing. This thing might kill me if it comes after us. I don't think it will. Um, I think I've taken its hit points down enough now that it will probably run. I really want to kill that. Um, I'd almost destroyed its uh, its layer, but I think I need a few more. I need more units to be able to do that. Okay, next job. Um, I'd say we're probably going to want research, so I'm going to get a research building up next. Let's get the let's remove the cost of the webway of claiming the webway gates and that's probably a good idea. I just grab one of those now. City. Activate webway gate. Right, let's get this one up here. How are you getting on, Sean? Yeah, pretty right. I'm just gonna move over a little bit. Just I I know the hybrids are down um, just south of where the ruin of all is. So I just want to sort of try and move around a little bit, but keep an eye on them just in case. Um, I've got my another squad of Skatari Vanguards coming along now, and it's going to claim a couple more tiles, because like I was saying about this build order thing, like I'm going to need a lot of tiles because I'm going to be building the same building type on each tile. Yes. So it's just something to manage. That's cool. You know, like every faction plays quite differently, don't they, in this? It's, you know, they're all playing within the same rules. It's not like super asymmetric, like something like Endless Legend, but I, kind of, I think it's a better game for that in that respect, because it doesn't require that you have to completely re relearn the game every time you play a different faction, but they do play significantly differently, and it's, you know, it's quite noticeable how different it is. Okay, these guys are just going to sit here and chill. Let's watch what Sean's doing up here. All right, so I might do an energy building first. It's really cool because I can actually go into your buildings and look at what you're building and stuff. All Which right, I, that's cool. I can't, I can't select anything. I can't build stuff for you, <laughs> but I can kind of have a look at what you're doing. So you could do the same with mine, no doubt. I can actually jump in and just see what it is that your your teammates doing. Ah, okay. So I've actually got guardian. I didn't see these rangers already. Let's go and get those guys out. I don't want to go down this way. In fact, next turn, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and try and finish off those Catachan Devils because that's really important. Get rid of those guys. Get rid of those things as quickly as possible. Let's get some more Guardians up now. Yeah, I'm pretty much just waiting for another Vanguard squad and then I'll push down a bit further while I'm building the Marshal. Okay, I think Sean, we should end the first episode here because we're only coming up to about half, uh, about half an hour. Yeah, um, cool. Maybe we play one more turn. I think <laughs> just one more turn, man. Yeah, let's do one. Yeah, we'll do we'll do one more turn. <laughs> we'll just round it out a little bit longer. Sure, uh, I might go. So I'm up to tier two for research now. I've, I might go the litany of the electromancer. It's a really, really uh, handy unit. It's basically a lightning bolt that strikes a tile, so and it's global. Oh right, so okay. at high level, it can actually do a lot of damage against neutrals. I think it can pretty much, like for a crew hound, like basic neutral, it can one shot them. Oh nice! So I'll grab that, um, and then straight after that, I'll probably need the building that increases population limit. I think. 
I'm going to grab this webway gateway just north of, uh, northeast of your base, or to the east of your base. I'm going to start kind of jumping around now. I think I've got I've got plenty of influence, and that should be definitely something I should be doing. Actually, no. Oh, sorry. I'll go to the loyalty building because I'm already starting to take a hit from population. So yeah. Okay, I'm going to end my turn. Just going to move my vanguard a bit further forward. And yeah, I think I'll end my turn here. Okay, guys, we're going to end the episode there then. Thanks for watching. I really, really hope you're enjoying this series. And let us know what you think about things in the comments. Are you interested in seeing more multiplayer stuff like this? If so, let us know. If you don't like it, let us know. <laughs> okay, this is Battle Mode and Sean signing out. Take it easy.